The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus went to a town called Nain, accompanied by his disciples and a great number of people. When he was near the gate of the town, it happened that a dead man was being carried out for burial, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a considerable number of the townspeople were with him. When the Lord saw her, he felt sorry for her. Do not cry, he said. And then he went up and put his hand on the bier, and the bearer stood still, and he said, Young man, I tell you to get up. And the dead man sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him to his mother. Everyone was filled with awe and praised God, saying, A great prophet has appeared to among us. God has visited his people. And this opinion of him spread throughout Judea and all over the countryside. The Gospel of the Lord. Morning all, Morning. wet and windy day, yeah. but you take a lot of discouraging. I congratulate you for turning up. Yeah, congratulate you for turning up. I imagine uh, this gospel today, which is only in Luke, by the way, the little town of Nain is only mentioned uh, one, this one time in the gospel. Uh, if you've ever been on the top of Mount Tabor, uh, and you can see it's something like Echo Point. You see valleys and hills for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. And if you know something of the history of the world and the invasions that came up and down that valley towards Jerusalem, uh, I knew precious little of it. The priest that was with me knew a lot and told me a lot about the Valley of Esdralon and what it meant. But underneath Tabor, the only village you can see, sign of life, right down, Underneath is Nain, a little town, and it's two miles from uh, Nazareth where Jesus lived. So it's just as though you were starting off a church or an evangelization program from here, and you got everybody together, accompanied by his disciples and a great number of people, and Jesus walked down the road to Seven Hills. And by the time he got to the station, he found a funeral. And he walked up to the hearse and raised the dead boy to life in the funeral procession. What a great way to get a mission going. <laughs> what a great way to get people talking. What a great way, as I said. Uh, this opinion of him is spread throughout Judea and all over the countryside. A great man, has, uh, God has visited his people. A great prophet has appeared to us. That's how Jesus started his mission and especially how it is portrayed in the Gospel of Luke. You know and I know that the three years Jesus spent in public ministry uh, spread from round about when he was 30 to when he was 33 years of age. But you also know, I hope, <coughs> that in the Gospel of Luke, uh, Luke describes that as just a one-year journey, and it's a one-year journey from his home in Nazareth to Jerusalem. And it's a journey to the cross. And Jesus began his ministry by going to Capernaum, from Cana and Capernaum, all those little villages around Nazareth, gathering together his disciples, gathering together some, and then he follows the Jordan River all the way down the valley through Samaria to Jerusalem. And this is the first two miles of the journey, the first step. How did Jesus begin his ministry? He began his ministry in Capernaum, of course, around Nazareth with his family, and then he begins the journey. And in, journey, in the journey in Luke, Jesus is always going towards the cross. He's always going towards Jerusalem. And Luke uses the word several times. He's going steadfastly to Jerusalem, that nothing is going to take him away from that journey to the cross. So we'll have a look at it. He got near the town of the uh, of 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 the he got near the the gate of the town, and it happened. Luke uses that phrase often. It happened. Uh, Jesus was going through the wheat fields, you know, and it happened that it was a Sabbath day, and it would happen. It was was sort of. It's more than a coincidence. It's more than a coincidence 
that a dead man was being carried out for burial, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. So the motivation for Jesus in this miracle is total compassion. Uh, a woman who lost her husband was in dire straits financially in the time. But then to lose an only son as well, Jesus knew this woman was absolutely destitute and she would have no means of support whatever now that her son had died. And he, Jesus, when the Lord saw her, he felt sorry for her, that he took on her pain and he took on to himself the very pain that he knew that she was feeling. He said, do not cry. You were always told <laughs> to, not to tell people not to cry. Cry or do them the world of good. Well, well uh, whatever about that. Jesus said to this woman, do not cry. And uh, you know, her, her concern would be uh, grief and mourning for her son. But you know, how am I going to manage? What am I going to do now? Without him, without my husband and without this boy, what am I going to do? And then the Lord said, do not cry. And he went up and put his hand on the bier and the bearers stood still. Now, I have uh, great discussions with, with my Bible-loving friends about Jesus and the old law. And a lot of... Scripture people are very happy to say that when the law didn't see Je suit Jesus, he just broke it. You know, when he touched the leper, he knew and I knew and you know that you don't touch lepers. If you touch a leper, you're considered to be a leper. You've got to go outside the village and you've got to live like the lepers live. Uh, Jesus touched the lepers. Jesus here touches the coffin of a dead person, which is clearly ritual uh, He's in need of ritual purification. We know that. Nod your heads, right? You're not struggling. Now, did Jesus just willy-nilly not care about the law or did Jesus always keep the law or you don't care? Well, you all voted for the third option. I see. All right. <laughs> uh, Jesus always did what his father wanted and it's his father's law. And the best... It's a, it is a mystery. Lots of mysteries in the Bible. But the best answer to this mystery I've got is that by the time Jesus got up and touched the beer, touched the coffin for that dead man, the man was already alive and Jesus knew it. Right? By the time Jesus touches the leper, they were already healed and Jesus knew it because of you know, whether the knowledge or gift of the spirit or some knowledge that, that, that he was given from the Father. But Jesus all meticulously always kept the law. He, I, he, wouldn't, he would not, the furthest thing from Jesus, the law was the law of his father to the Old Testament and that law bound until all was fulfilled. Jesus said not one dot or not one cross T would pass away till all this was fulfilled and it, when was it fulfilled? It was fulfilled when Jesus died on the cross. So up till then, the law still stood and I'm not happy with people that say that Jesus broke the law. He certainly did things that were against the law, but I, I'm happy to say, I'm happy to say, you can use it, throw it out or keep it, or whatever you like. It's a fair question. It's a fair question. And I think that Jesus encourages us always to keep the law, and I think he always kept it himself. Uh, and compassion, of course. Compassion overrules everything. Compassion overrules everything. And in this... Uh, this uh, Example, the whole motivation of Jesus is not to do something showy to get his evangelization program on the road or to get it going. The whole motivation, clearly in the story, is Jesus felt sorry for her and he felt sorry for her because she had no means of supporting herself after this funeral and she was, what was going to happen. And Jesus knew he was on the way to Jerusalem, he wasn't going to be staying there. So what did he do? He had compassion on her and he said to the dead man, young man, I tell you to get up. And the dead man sat up and began to talk and Jesus gave him to his mother. It's just a simple story in Luke. But it is a story about the beginning of an evangelization program. How do you start? I did a retreat once many years ago. Some of you might remember Father Bertolucci 
was here in 1980, I think, and one of the priests at the priest retreat put up the hand and said, Father, how do you start this stuff in a parish? How do you get it going? And he said, raise a couple of people from the dead and it'll be going in five minutes. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>